Thank you for joining us for Resource Compliance Online Process Safety Training. My name is Peter Thomas, President and Engineer with Resource Compliance. Today's lesson is titled Ammonia Safety and Identification. There are several learning objectives to keep in mind throughout this training. Upon completion of this training, you should number one, know the basic properties of ammonia, two, know the correct first aid procedures to follow if ammonia exposure occurs. 3. Know how to identify ammonia using placards and labels. And 4. Understand where ammonia accidents are likely to occur in ammonia refrigeration systems and also what causes them. Every year people are injured and killed due to human error and mechanical failure in ammonia refrigeration systems. Sometimes the culprit is as simple as an untrained operator or a mislabeled valve. These events always serve as a staggering reminder that ammonia is very dangerous and needs to be treated with respect. It is important and necessary to take some time to stop and consider some basic information about ammonia. First of all, ammonia is naturally occurring and emitted from a wide variety of everyday sources, such as livestock and fertilizer applications. Ammonia is not a carcinogen in that exposure to small quantities of ammonia over long periods of time is completely safe and produces no negative health effects. Second, ammonia is widely used in many industries including fertilizer, metal treating, water treatment, boiler stack emission control, refrigeration, and cleaning to name just a few. Third, as a refrigerant, ammonia has excellent thermodynamic properties and can move more energy per pound of refrigerant than its synthetic competitors. Fourth, while ammonia has great characteristics as a refrigerant and cleaner, it is highly toxic to humans. Exposure to large quantities of ammonia can cause irreversible health effects including death. Because of this, ammonia is considered acutely toxic. Ammonia is also a flammable substance, although typically it is only considered to be slightly flammable because it has a very narrow flammability range of 15 to 28 percent by volume. Finally, ammonia is best known for its strong, irritating odor. Sometimes this is referred to as ammonia's self-alarming characteristic. Ammonia's odor is so strong that most people detect ammonia at concentrations that are well below dangerous thresholds. Humans can be exposed to ammonia in a variety of ways. There are four types of ammonia exposure that can occur. Inhalation, skin contact, eye contact, and ingestion. As a chemical, ammonia is very attracted to water. As a result, when exposure occurs, ammonia tends to migrate toward the moist areas of the body. Eyes, mouth, throat, neck, and armpit. Inhalation is the most common method of ammonia exposure. Inhalation of ammonia gas causes sore throat, coughing, shortness of breath, and labored breathing. Anytime concentrations are expected to exceed 35 ppm, respirators should be used to prevent ammonia inhalation. Skin contact with ammonia gas or liquid can result in irritation and burns. Keep in mind that ammonia used in refrigeration systems is often very cold, so frostbite can also occur in conjunction with skin contact. Eye contact with ammonia is very serious and can cause irritation and permanent loss of sight or blindness. Ingestion is the least common form of ammonia exposure and will cause severe pain and burning to the mouth and esophagus. The first aid procedures for ammonia exposure are actually pretty simple. In the event that you are exposed to ammonia, it is important to number one, remove yourself or the exposed person from the contaminated area. 2. Immediately flush with large quantities of water and 3. Seek medical aid. There are some other first aid variations depending on the type of exposure but those are the three steps that are extremely important to always remember. There are several labels and, pl and placards that are used to identify containers and pipes that contain ammonia. The first system that we will discuss is the DOT placard system. Whenever a trailer or rail car is carrying ammonia, it should be placarded on all four sides with the label on this slide. Each DOT placard has four required components, an ID number, class number, background color, and a symbol. For the case of ammonia, the ID number is 1005, the class number is 2, indicating a compressed gas. The background color is green, indicating that ammonia is generally considered non-flammable. And the symbol is a compressed gas cylinder, which provides a warning of high pressure within the container. The National Fire Protection Association has, com has a completely different placard system for stationary facilities. Their system uses a diamond with four quadrants. The blue quadrant indicates health hazard, the red quadrant indicates flammability, the yellow quadrant indicates reactivity, and the white quadrant is reserved for special cases. 
The NFPA system puts a numeric value ranging from 0 to 4 in each quadrant, with 0 being the least severe and 4 being the most severe. In the case of ammonia, NFPA has given it a health rating of 3 because of ammonia's high toxicity, a flammability rating of 1 when ammonia is stored outdoors, and a flammability rating of 3 when stored indoors, and finally a reactivity rating of 0. NFPA has not assigned any special case hazards to ammonia. The International Institute of Ammonia Refrigeration, or IIAR, has also developed a labeling system for ammonia pipes that has been widely adopted in the ammonia refrigeration industry. The IIAR system recommends that each pipe is labeled with a yellow label containing the following five things. 1. The word ammonia in black font. 2. A directional flow arrow. 3 a pressure band indicating whether the pipe is under high or low pressure, 4, a physical state band indicating whether the pipe contains liquid or vapor, and 5, a service abbreviation which indicates the function or service of the pipe. A list of a few of the recommended service abbreviations has been included on this slide. In order to prevent ammonia exposure, it's necessary to understand where ammonia is located in a facility and more importantly, what components are most likely to develop leaks. In, in the May 2010 issue of Condenser, a publication of IIAR, an article titled Low Charge Systems May Be the Answer summarized the results of a 12-question survey about ammonia releases from over 700 respondents nationwide. The table on this slide shows the results of that survey as it relates to where ammonia leaks tend to occur in ammonia refrigeration facilities. According to the survey, almost one quarter of all ammonia releases come from flanges or joints. Another 20% come from control valves. Pumps, relief valves, and compressors make up another 30% of all leaks, and the remainder of leaks came from oil pots, piping, transfers, evaporators, sight glasses, and storage tanks. In addition to considering the location of ammonia leaks, the survey also investigated the cause of ammonia leaks. According to those who responded, 60% of all ammonia leaks are caused by human error, while 37% are caused by mechanical failure. The remaining 3% resulted from other causes such as natural disaster, fire, and ammonia theft. In closing, I would like to personally challenge you to perform a thorough walkthrough of your ammonia facility so that you don't become a statistic on a survey. This slide provides a series of sample questions that might be helpful to you when performing the walkthrough. It's not a comprehensive list, but it should get you off to a good start. As always, thanks for joining us in this resource compliance online process safety training. If you have questions or comments about this training or the products and services that resource compliance offers, don't hesitate to call us at 559-591-8898 or send us an email at admin at resourcecompliance.com. You can also visit our website, www.resourcecompliance.com, to find a bunch of great resources. Thanks again, and have a great day.